Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Uh, this is Game God Fluent, bringing you episode one of yet another new Let's Try on my channel. What is a Let's Try? If this is your first time checking this out on my channel, uh, Let's Try is just sort of an informal Let's Play. It's not quite as dedicated as a Let's Play because in real life I schedule three-day blocks of games in order to LP. So I'll do three days of, say you know, Rogue Valley if I'm LPing it. Then I'll take a day off and do three days of another game, and then I'll schedule Rogue Valley maybe next month or the month after and, and kind of keep prog progressing that way so I can progress multiple games at once. LTs are kind of, whenever I can make an episode for them, I will. They're generally not as long as the LPs, but possibly they could be if they really, you know, if I really get into it. But um, yeah, so this is episode one of a new LT. And it's of a game that I've been wanting to play for a long time, and I just never got around to it. And it seems like a cool board game, sort of card game, RPG. It's called Heretic Operative. So, um, I have not touched this game for like two years. It said I last played today, I just booted the game up just to see what was what. You know, I never played it. Um, we're going to do a full episode today and then try to continue this whenever I can and uh, make some episodes. So, hope you guys will join me for at least today and however long in the future we go with this. But, uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. I know this is going to be a cool game because um, I remember it stuck out to me when I bought it. I was like, oh, yeah, I got to play that one <clears throat> soon. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and light a smoke here. We're going to hit play, see what happens. Here we go. Hmm. So, um, it does not have an option screen from what I can see. Apparently I made uh, this fills in Game God Fluent or else I maybe made that profile before. I don't know. But all we really have to check is new game. And here we go. <clears throat> Select a story deck. This determines the storyline and events of the game. Complete all chapters to win. So... These unlock at different levels, level 4, level 11, and this is your level here with level 1, earn XP by completing games, level up to unlock additional stories, cults, and operatives. So, we start with this story deck, the initiation. <clears throat> no wins yet, first win will grant bonus XP, a new heretic operative attracts the attention of the cult. So I don't really know what's going on with cults and operatives and stuff, so we're all going to learn together basically, but... Select an operative. Begin the game with this operative and play. If all operatives die, you lose. So we only have choice of one. And that is Virian Spellbinder. Um, a veteran heretic with strong arcane skill, which I take it as magic. Tranquil Mind can use contemplation to reduce corruption. Imperial Collegiate, plus one starting lore, several starting spells. So that sounds good. Um, there's his stats we can look at. Arcane, knowledge of the arcane, practice and experience in the ways of magic. An attunement to the world beyond the physical realm, used in passing arcane skill challenges, including researching new spells from a spell book. So he's going to be pretty magical in nature, it seems. There's his social skill, charisma, diplomacy, insight, and spycraft, used in passing social skill challenges. His physical, strength, dexterity, fitness, and survival training, used in passing physical skill challenges, every two points of physical skill. Adds plus one to each die when using iron, non-magical combat abilities. Four, health. Vitality, life force, and physical well-being. When this goes to zero, you die. Being defeated in combat by most enemies will cause a loss of one health. And then three, tranquility. Strong mental defenses can be used to resist corruption, to safely dissipate it way away from the mind and body. This is achieved through deep meditation and spiritual calm but also through higher mental and emotional functions such as self-sacrifice and empathy. Each turn, corruption is reduced by tranquility. Be careful if tranquility ever becomes negative as it will cause a continual increase in corruption. And he's got a three in that, okay? So select a cult. This cult leader and their cultists will oppose you. If the cult's power grows too strong or they destroy your hidden sanctum, you lose. So we're going to be going against the serpent cult. They have poison attacks and cult sites transform into snake pits. Okay, and then we select the difficulty. There's Operative, there's Initiate. Skill checks are easier. Start with additional resources, plus one action point. And there's Excommunicated. Skill checks are harder. Combat's more difficult. Begin with an additional Cultist. We'll start on Operative, Standard, standard Difficulty. And I uh, hit Start. 
And here we go. We'll go through the tutorial, I guess. Okay, so we're thrown in here. Um, click to reveal card. Chapter 1, Make Contact. Operative, there is an emergency. A commoner is nearby, the local merchant. She shows talent for magic and has attracted the interest of the cult. Recruit Octavia, the merchant, and make a heretic operative out of her before the cult ruins another mage. Go to Woodbridge Farmstead. After you move your operative to the farmstead, press the end turn button. We have one action point remaining. Each unused action point converts into one fate point. Um, end turn plus fate. Um, I don't know what that means. Um, and the enemy is Anguinus, Serpent Mage, Cult Power 1. Cultist activity fills the meter, which increases Cult Power 1 full. You will lose if it fills three more times. So, if it fills all the way up here. So, if, we, if it gets to here, when Cult activity passes this marker, the next event card is drawn and played. Event cards are linked to the current story and generally reflect advancing cult progress in their overall plan. So, these are when the events happen. <clears throat> when cult activity presses this X marker, the next cult card is drawn and played. Cult cards control cultist movement and activity as well as special abilities for each cult leader. Then over here we have Hint. Select your operative with left click, then right click a destination to travel. travel. Okay, so we've got... Virian Spellbinder. Um, we see down here his stats. Um, difficulty easy. Uh, dislocation is heart of the Heretics organization. Hidden from the searching eye of the Church Inquisition. Hidden base. Defeat condition. If too many cultists are searching this location, the Heretic inner sanctum is discovered and destroyed. It requires three cultists at the hideout. And operatives. If all operatives are dead, the Heretics are destroyed. Um, Spy Master recruited, Heretic Influence 0, per turn plus 2 influence. Forager can be recruited. Aspects can be recruited. I guess we'll get to this. Mentor, Healer, yeah, we'll get to that. Um, click to see your inventory, click to see your spells and abilities. Click for the full game log, click help for game overview. Oh yeah, game overview. Okay. Each turn you have two action points to spend on movement and other activities. Unspent action points turn into fate. Recruit town folk, townsfolk to gain resources and powerful abilities. This requires spending influence. Don't forget to check your inventory and spells for useful resources. Almost everything in the game has tooltips. Experiment, explore, and take chances. Let's check our inventory. We have an unknown spellbook. Draw from spellbook dead at deck. Add to Virian Spellbinder. We have one remaining uses, and it could be sold. Spells and abilities. We have Blood Whispers. No matter what is promised, never obey. Required health. Health of 2+. plus. It adds 5 corruption, 4 combat dice, blood. Blood dice will cause a point of damage if any die roll is a 1. Use with caution, and it's repeatable. <coughs> Very dangerous to use that. Contemplation of the Arcane. We pay one lore. We have one. Required corruption of 25 plus. It, it basically removes 25 corruption. Requires an action point. Earth and Grasp. As steady as the Earth. Plus two corruption. Plus three combat dice Earth. Earth dice are very consistent and always have a value of three. Firebolt. Controlled Chaos. Plus five corruption. Plus three combat dice Fire. Fire dice get a bonus multiplier when matches are rolled. Hmm. Okay, so those are our spells and abilities. Then we have the hideout. Difficulty zero. There's a social and a physical skill here. Which... Click for additional info about this location. The Northern Reach has... Let's zoom out a little bit. The Northern Reach has been occupied by humans for hundreds of years, but there are signs of people in the area from long before. The ruins here are not of human design or construction, nor do they have any resemblance to anything made by the elves, dwarves, or any other known peoples. In truth, nobody knows who built here or what this once was. The workers of Ione, who construct their shelter in and around what remains, commonly refer to it as their castle. Hmm. Um, click for additional information about this operative. Virian was one of the last new students admitted to the Imperial College before it was shut down by the Hierarchist Church. While he was a talented student, 
His vocal opposition to the church made him a target, and he fled the city when the Edict of Vocula condemned the use of all magic. Ten years ago, he became one of the founding members of the Heretics, training up new mages and teaching others how to safely manage corruption. Uh, Virian starts with a collection of starting combat spells, some lore, and a well-developed arcane skill. His starting tranquility stat and contemplation ability lets him use spells more fre frequently than other operatives. Okay, then we've got... Um, primary challenge. Uh, I don't know what that means if we click it. And I guess we can recruit here. <clears throat> Spymaster is recruited. We get plus two influence per turn. Oh, here we go up here. Lore. We have one lore. It's deep arcane secrets, esoteric knowledge, or esoteric knowledge, and rare magical insight. Used for researching new spells from spellbooks and casting powerful rituals. Gain lore by researching ancient tomes and forbidden knowledge of places like the museum district. Then we have two gold, material wealth such as coins, gems, or rare trade goods, used to purchase items for merchants or hire mercenary banners, gain gold through hard work and adventure opportunities, or recruit townsfolk to provide a more reliable gold income. Three influence, the hidden strength of the heretic's secret society, used to recruit additional townsfolk into the heretics to provide active or passive bonuses and new operatives. When cult influence rises in an area, heretic influence can be used to directly combat it, gain influence by recruiting cell leaders in as many locations as possible and protecting them from cult influence. Rumors, we have zero. Intelligence report, contacts, scouting missions, and knowledge of current events. Used to avoid an adventure card and draw a new one to encounter instead. Gain rumors by building spine networks and staying connected to your sources at places like Kopex Tavern. And we have zero fate, luck, karma, astrological knowledge, and visions of the future used to re-roll dice in a skill challenge. Action points that are not used automatically convert into fate points. So there's that. We could recruit, I guess, a mentor for all for all of our influence. Um, I think our corruption, what is corruption at? Zero? That's cult activity. Um, where do we see corruption, I wonder? Upkeep, townsfolk generate income and other automatic actions. Story, advance to the next chapter of the story if current requirements are met. Action, operatives can spend action points, move, use item. Adventure, each standard location with an operative generates an adventure card and combat resolves. Enemy, cultists take actions and play cards. So whatever's lit up there, I guess, is what's going on. But I guess we'll learn about corruption. Um, if the corruption's 60 or less... There's a 50% chance to gain 2 fate minus 10 corruption or plus 1 tranquility. And then there's messenger can be recruited for 1 influence. When recruited, enable spending an action point for the following effect. Summon all operatives to this location. Then there's ones we can't afford yet who cost more influence than we have. And when health is not at maximum, we can recover it by recruiting a healer. Um, so we'll uh, go ahead and click Virian, and we can click Woodbridge Farmstead. Let's learn about it before moving there. There's a recruit there. Um, the land just southeast of Ione is filled with numerous small farms. Predictably, this region takes its name from the wooden bridge that spans the short river and connects farmers to markets in the city. Right here. Oh, right there. That's the wooden bridge, I guess. Somewhat isolated, the farms near the eastern forest and southern hills occasionally suffer raids. Empress Voc Vocula has promised safety to the region, however, and patrols are a common sight here. There's Kopex Tavern. We can check the map out. There's different cool stuff. Oh yeah, the Elven Archive. This is going to be fun, guys. Wow. Love these hand-drawn maps. Desolate Isle. And maps get even bigger than this. This is just a starting kind of small, tiny map. Um, so let's go here to Woodbridge Farmstead. Oh, like it says. Okay, the fields of the Midlands are dotted with farms like the Woodbridge Farmstead, quiet, rural, and peaceful. These farmers know the old ways, but are also superstitious folks, not prone to trusting strangers or magic. And of course, we are magic users trying to avoid the church's holy inquisition to take to ruin mages or whatever. 
we'll learn about it. Um, after you've moved your operator to the farmstead, press end turn. Okay. And now, click to encounter an adventure here on Woodbridge Farmstead. Click to draw adventure card, so same idea. I think. Yep, click to reveal card. First lesson. Two Templars appear at the farmstead just as you make contact with the merchant. Come, we cannot let them see us. Why? They hunt the colt, not us. Convince her to move. Challenge skill. Social 2 versus 0. 74% chance to, to beat it, I guess. On success, we avoid the Templars. On failure, you must encounter the Templars and minus one health. So, we click that. Skill social. Difficulty 0. Um... This is the active character skill needed to beat this challenge. If your skill matches the difficulty of the challenge, you need to roll an 11 plus on three dice to succeed at the challenge, which is a 50% chance. For every point the skill is above the challenge, the target value goes down by one, becoming easier. The reverse is true if your skill is below the difficulty. So because... Um, for every point our skill is above the challenge, so two... The target value goes down by one. What, um... Oh, target is nine. So, okay, so we have to roll this value or higher to succeed at the challenge. We have a 74%. We can use fate to re-roll. You explain to Octavia that the church doesn't care if you are the cult. They will attack anyone who practice any, practices any kind of magic. Let's roll. Bong, bong, bong. Oh, failure. But she hesitates and they approach. When the first of them is close, you attack. With surprise on your side, both Templars are knocked to the ground after a short scuffle. You grab off Octavia's arm and run. You are injured, escaping the Templars minus one health. Dang it, Octavia. <laughs> Continue. Okay. Health is now three, plus two influence, now five. Click to reveal the card. Chapter two, Return of the Hideout. You've arrived at the farmstead and found the merchant. Convince her to join the heretics, then move her to the hideout. Left click the farmstead on the map to see the merchant, recruit Octavia, and move her to the hideout. Okay, so we click this. Um, we can recruit a blacksmith for one gold per turn. Um, mayor can be recruited. Influence cost four, requires heretic influence of 10 plus, which we don't have. Priest can be recruited. When recruited, enable spending an action point for the following effect move to capital, cathedral district, herbalist. Pay one gold for plus two fate. Add Herbalist Special to Vivian, Vivian Spellbinder, which is a plus three item on use. And Shopkeeper can be recruited for two influence. When recruited, enable spending an action point for Shopkeeper. Pay one gold and get draw times three from the item deck common. Keep one and add to collection. And that's a question mark. It says, Town, townsfolk are significant people in, in the various locations around Ione. Heretic influence is used to recruit them to aid the heretics. Cult influence can force them into hiding if not removed. Passive townsfolk give you an automatic bonus like resource income. Active townsfolk let you spend an action point for some effect. And townsfolk that are recruitable as operatives can be found here as well. Then we've got a farmer can be recruited to influence. Requ enable spending an action point for plus two gold minus ten corruption and applies the status exhausted unable to spend action points on this character and here's Octavia the merchant can be recruited for five influence becomes a controllable controllable operative social skill plus six gold plus two rumors travel the d dusty roads with a caravan traveling the dusty roads with the caravan is no longer enough for the merchant they are anxious to join the fight against the cult directly and are willing to devote their considerable resources to the cause. Boom. Okay, let's recruit for five influence. There she is. We get plus six gold, plus two rumors, and Octavia the Merchant spawns at Woodbridge Farmstead. So we click her. She's got three health, one arcane, three social, one physical, minus one tranquility. It's a continual source of corruption, I guess, if... It's plus one. Plus one from Cult Leader. Okay. But we have mine we have three, so I guess it'll keep it in balance. And no corruption. Um Sweet. Go ahead and take her and move her back to the hideout. Let's move well. 
Yeah, move her back to the hideout. Okay. Spymaster is recruited. Okay, so that's complete. Um, I guess I'll, I'll move back too. To protect in case anything happens. And then I guess we end turn. And we pull an adventure card at the hideout. Thug for Octavia the Merchant. A thug flanked by sneering underlings is shaking down the more vulnerable workers in the camp so we can click who we want to do something. Order him to stop pays one influence. We can't do that. We have none. So each one has... This has a 50-50 chance. Keep a low profile. Do not get involved. The thug tires of his game and departs or things get out of hand and the thug kills someone. 50-50 shot. So since she has two... Social versus or three versus variance two. We'll go ahead and have her try to convince him to stop an 83% chance. And on success, we get plus two f influence. And on failure, it spawns another thug. So let's go ahead and roll. Our target is an eight. Nice. We rolled an 11. You describe how the people in the camp toil for what little they have. The thug feels ashamed and leaves. Plus two influence. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, Serpent Colt Sight appears at Lost Temple, plus two influence for us, plus three lore, now four. Octavia the Merchant gains items, Spellbook, on the essential nature of all things. We reveal a card. Chapter three, prepare for battle. To survive as a heretic operative, the merchant will need to know some spells. Select the operative with the highest arcane skill, then use the Spellbook in your inventory to research a new spell. Research a spell. So that's obviously going to be Varian. Look in your inventory for a spell book you can use or identify. There's the unknown spell book and on the essential nature of all things. It pays one lore. Or you have to pay one lore to use it. 74% um, chance. And on success we draw two cards from the spell deck. Elemental. Keep one and add it to our collection. It requires an action point, And it has three uses. So let's click it and... Um, First, check it out. A vast taxonomy of many things, both mundane and magical, with a detailed assessment of their fundamental components. By utilizing some learned lore and arcane skill, practical applications of elemental magic could be learned. Okay, so let's um, go ahead and use item. Five versus three. We're looking for a nine or better. Researching the book is challenging, as the topics it covers are vast in scope. Three, five, one, nine, just made it. But you find what you need and gain some fundamental insights. We draw two cards from this elemental spell deck. And we get to keep one. So let's reveal that one. Fireball. Concentrated destructive power, plus 15 corruption. That's bad, I think. Plus four combat dice, fire. Fire dice gets a bonus multiplier when matches are rolled. And we learn the spell. Or earthen fists, channel the strength of the earth. Plus five corruption. Plus seven combat dice, earth. Earth dice are very consistent and always have a value of three. So that's a 21. Whereas four combat dice, you could roll a 28, but <clears throat> this only adds five corruption. And I think this is more conservative of the two and less wild. Fire dice does get the bonus multiplier, but I mean... The Earth Dice are consistent, always have a value of 3, so we get 7 of them. We'll always roll a 21, which is a pretty good roll on 4 dice, you know? Not bad. I think I'll go with the Earth and Fist. Okay, spell learned, so look in your inventory for a spell book you can use or identify. Oh, wait. Research a spell. We did it. Um, right, we don't want to do it again. Or do we? I guess we could. Um, for three influence out of four, we could recruit a mentor. There's really no reason to yet. Forager, per turn, 50% chance to add one gold. 50% no effect. I don't want to use my influence yet in case we have to do more stuff for the uh, tutorial. I guess that's all. So let's end turn. 
uh, one fate point for the for the action point we didn't use. Click the draw adventure card at hideout. Lurking cultist, you turn the corner just in time to see a figure skulking out of your quarters. Your eyes meet briefly before the spy turns and flees. Um, physical two versus zero, physical one. So I guess Firion will chase him. Seventy-four percent chance. And uh, if he doesn't succeed, on failure, an assassin approaches, spawns an assassin. So we need a nine or better. We can re-roll it once. You chase the cultist through the camp. Hmm. Success. And easily catch them. Your presence here shall remain secret. Lost Temple. Cult influence is now one. Cultist activity increasing. Click to reveal card. The wheels turn. There is something in the air. The meteor on the right shows cult progress. When a cell with an exclamation point is filled, you draw an event card. Event cards are linked to the current story. Plus two influence, now six. We pull another card. Our main thing is to defeat all cultists to remain. Chapter four, kill them all. The cult will not give up easily. The cultist sent to find the merchant must be eliminated. Move an operative into any location where there is a cultist. Combat happens automatically at the end of a turn. If your operatives are in the same location as an enemy, eliminate all cultists on the map. Oh, there's a serpent cultist right there. Dang, combat rank 30. Cultist in the thrall of Anguinus, the serpent mage, one damage, applies viper bite. Um, I guess we can't see them because we're not in that location, so. There's one cultist there, one over here. There's an orc raider there. I guess we fight them too, wow. This is gonna be awesome, guys. Like, this is already so cool. Let's go ahead and save and get this first episode saved, okay? Uh, see how long we've been playing. 27 minutes, cool. So I guess we take Virian, who has better combat stats and stuff. Basically more arcane. He can use that earth and fist. Um, we'll move here. Let's see how it goes. Okay, combat will happen at the end of the turn, so... There's nothing we really want to do. Could always use Earth and Fist or something, we'll see. And then Octavia... Um... She has two Corruption. Did we see what... Did we read these? Yeah, but we didn't... I don't know if we read this one. Corruption. As magic seeps into our world from the unseen realms, those who channel it have inevitably become corrupted, altering both mental and physical attributes. Any weakness in one's mental defenses, such as giving in to temptation or suffering mental trauma, can also let corruption set in. Higher levels of corruption will reduce your ability to resist corruption, but also provide you with greater arcane skill. Interesting kind of trade-off there. If corruption reaches 100, there's a chance each turn of permanently giving in to corruption and turning. Um, she has an action point, so should she maybe recruit a mentor? We have six influence. Uh, wouldn't be a bad idea. And it'll wipe out that two corruption. Not that two is a lot, but... And add one tranquility, so she's right. So she's not... There's not a continual increase in corruption. Got it, okay. So we're going to recruit a mentor. The mentor has been around a long time, channeling magic, yet seemingly untouched by corruption. By learning how to calm the mind, corruption can be reduced by those who are too far down the path, maybe beyond redemption. Oh, that's a 50% chance that we gain one tranquility or we gain two fate minus 10 corruption requires an action point. Recruit three influence. Let's do it. And what happened? Mentor. Tranquility is now zero. Nice, so she's not currently gaining corruption. Okay, and Varian is ready to get into combat. So I guess we'll go ahead and end the turn. Um, he's at three out of four health, though. Alright, let's do it. Boom. 
Okay, back at the hideout. Uh, we'll go to that second. First, we have an encounter. We encounter an adventure here at Woodbridge Farmstead. Of course, it should be combat. No. Hidden cash. Overgrown with weeds, you almost missed the giant stone. Someone has put something under it. Hmm. On success, we get two gold and draw from the common item deck and add to collection or leave things alone. Minus 10 corruption. We'll try to overturn it. 74% chance. We have one reroll. Um, we need a nine or better. It's physical. The stone is very heavy. Boom. But you put some effort into it and find a small cache of treasure. Two gold and we get to draw from the item deck. Um, and we get an elven thistle infused with memory. So draw from spell deck elven. Plus two fate. Uses remaining one can be sold. So we'll have to check that out. Here is combat. Burian Spellbinder versus Serpent Cultist. To win a combat, gain enough battle points to meet or exceed the enemy's combat rank, which is 30. Gain battle points by playing cards and try to reach the enemy's combat rank. Play cards, combat spells, or maneuvers to roll battle dice and gain battle points. More about damage types. Iron. It's non-magical damage, boosted by physical skill. Arcane is boosted by arcane skill. Nature, plus one or minus one based on tranquility. Earth, always a roll value of three, which we know about. Fire, bonus multiplier for matching dice. Uh, blood, take damage if any die roll is one. And night, gain corruption from value rolled two times if the final die is six. So that's also dangerous. So we have combat dice blood, combat dice earth, combat dice fire. So... Actually, if we roll Elven um, or Earth and Fist, seven dice times three, 21, and then we, roll, we do Earth and Grasp, three combat dice times three is nine. That gives us exactly 30, so let's start with Earth and Fist. Boom. Um, combat rank of 30. Cultus in the Thrall of Anguin is the Serpent Mage. Lose... One damage applies Viper Bite. Hmm. Okay, we're in round two, so let's go ahead and finish it off. Victory. Cultist's Cloak. These cloaks are used by the cult to covertly identify one another. Turn in at the Cathedral District for a reward. It can be sold. Serpent Cultist is dead. And then, okay... So you're good to go. Um, the next adventure is back at the hideout. Lion attack. Yelling from the road draws your attention. A man is face down in the road, bloody. A mountain lion circles a young girl holding a too large sword before her. Mm. So if we don't put ourselves at risk, it's a really big cat. We'll gain 50 corruption. Um, if we protect the girl, we gain one influence, but if we fail, minus two health. Well, we have to try to protect her. So, um, let's, let's have Octavia do it. Boldly, you move forward to fight off the lion. Ten or better. Failure. But the predator is too fast for you. The girl is dead before you can get to her, but you arrive in time to be mauled too, minus two health. Or... Go ahead and re-roll this one. It would have to be a three or better. Boom! Success! So boldly you move forward to fight off the lion, and after a brief skirmish, the large cat flees. Together with the girl, you mourn the dead, plus one influence. <laughs> For some reason... Oh, it fills from this direction. Wow, why is that filling so fast? Coltus advance. There's a sense of impending dread that settles across the land. The cultists are on the move. Minus three tranquility or something? Um. Alright, so. End turn plus two fate, but no. They're getting plus one from the cult leader. Oh, if it fills three more times, 
so it has to fill the entire chart three times. And when Colt activity fills the meter fully, Colt power goes up and Colt deck is replaced with more challenging cards. If Colt power gets too high, the Colt completes their plans and the game's end. The game ends. So sadly, it, I guess it is timed. I mean, I say sadly because it would be awesome if like... Like, I feel, I don't know, I want to be able to explore and stuff. But, I guess we have two operatives, so... Um, let's see. So from here, um, we have six influence. We can recruit a shopkeeper. <clears throat> and then if we want to spend the action point, we pay one gold, we have ten, and we draw three from the item deck and keep one. Herbalist. Priest move to Capital Cathedral District, which is quite a ways away. Difficulty six, Inquisitor Citadel. Crew to townsfolk in this location have a ten percent chance each turn to be detected and killed. Hard difficulty of social challenges. The church is in the heart of Ioni, where nobles and clergy alike control the fate of the kingdom. It does have a cult cloak bounty, but if we go there, we're going to face a hard social challenge. Yeah. Um, so right now, what can we do at Kopex Tavern? Difficulty 3. It has arcane social and physical challenges. All type of primary challenges. At the crossroads of travel in and out of Ione. I guess it's Ione. Copex Tavern is a well-known destination for finding information in mercenaries. You can recruit a mercenary veteran for four gold. Draw from mercenary banner deck. The barkeep can be recruited. 33% to get plus two rumors or plus two influence or minus five corruption. Can also help you in some adventures at the tavern. An informant, you get one rumors per turn. Cell leader, you get one influence boots per turn. Um, let's see. Let's see where we're at right now. Um, wait, what is Octavia going to do now? The mentor is recruited. I can click again. Use my ac use her action point to do one of those two things. Plus one tranquility or plus two fate minus ten corruption. Um, healer, Auspex. Per turn, minus one cult activity resisted. Ah, oh, influence of four. I will, I'll get that next. I'll leave her there. I think. Um. Wait a minute. Auspex. Okay, we can do that now. We have six influence, so... Minus one cold activity resisted. Um, the Auspex is attuned to the arcane signatures of the cult and can sense their magic even before it happens. Dealing with the cult more directly is the safest way to ensure that the most dire visions never become reality. Oh. Okay. The Auspex has been recruited. One second, guys. Okay, we're back. So, now, does this mean... Total cult activity per turn is always at least one. Oh, really? So I did that for nothing, unless the cult activity increases to two. The fact that it's always at least one really kind of, I don't know. In my opinion, it puts a damper a bit on the exploration, because we really have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve, twenty-four, thirty-six. So thirty-six turns or moves and then you lose plus it's getting harder all the time from the coal power going up so I don't know maybe we can turn that off somehow and when we advance levels a bit or just get used to it and you know maybe it's not that big of a deal I mean people love the game and love the the board game and stuff so it must not be that big of a deal but um, we have two influence left. We're at the Woodbridge Farmstead. I could move 
to there, and then maybe the Serpent Cultist moves this direction. There's a Forgotten Tomb. Ooh, six physical difficulty. It has Wandering Monsters. If there's no monsters here, one may emerge from the tomb. Applies every turn. Hunter's Bounty. Turn in Monster Trophy to claim the bounty. Plus two gold. So that's pretty neat. The Forgotten Tomb was found during surveys of the Northern Reach shortly after the first buildings of Ione were completed. Curious to learn its secrets, the Imperial College sent several expeditions, none of which returned. The place was eventually declared off-limits and remained in obscurity for years. Rumors of adventurers finding gems within, within rekindled interest in the place, but far more treasure seekers end up impaled by one trap or another than find gems. Mm, I have a feeling this Serpent Cultist is going to move here. So I can really kind of stay where I'm at. I don't think there's any way to move here. Right, we can either move. They have to come to get to Woodbridge. They have to come through here. So if we stay and hire a, sh uh, a shopkeeper. The shopkeeper has an eye for items of significant value and knows how to keep a hidden stock secure from the Inquisition. You may be saving the world from evil cultists, but they aren't still aren't going to give you items for free so we get to draw three items and keep one for two influence let me see what the combat rank of this one is 30 okay same deal so uh yeah i guess we'll pay the shopkeeper hmm where is it boom let's do it boom We've got a fate-bound orb. Only those attuned to fate can unlock the powers of this artifact. You pay two fate, and then you draw from fate artifacts deck. Interesting. Heirlooms, or heirloom sword. A sword of a pattern that has not been seen on a battlefield for several lifetimes. If it was not so badly chipped and warped, it might fetch a good price as a museum piece. Plus three combat dice of iron. Iron dice get plus one value for every two points of physical skill. Uses remaining three in the last bit. Utuk in amber. A heavy chain with a large amber pendant. Inscribed on a band around the pendant is Utuk. It's difficult to make out, but it looks like a strange creature is imprisoned in the amber. This item has a magical aura. Apply status effect, status effect memories of Utuk. Plus two skill arcane, minus one tranquility. Uses remaining one. Magic can be sold. I actually like the fate bound orb the most. Um, Utuk seems very useful if I could give that to the merchant Octavia to increase her arcane but our arcane is already fine so I'm going to go ahead and check out the fate bound orb and when we have two fate I'll go ahead and uh, use it so if we end the turn right now without doing anything we have no influence anyway we have nine gold but that's not going to get us anywhere. Let's just go ahead and get one fate and end the turn. Okay, we have... Oh, we have to play a new card each turn. Okay, he did not move yet. Um, but I have to save here anyway, guys, because we have made it this far. Oh, I can't. Only allowed during main player action phase. Okay, so we have to go through... Through our cards first. All right, let's check these out. Harvest. The harvest comes in. The farmers offer good pay for anyone who will help. Virian says, Use one rumor to avoid this card. Oh, and draw a replacement adventure. That's what rumors are for, right? Um, we'll help for two gold. Um, he still has his action point, I think. And then here we go here. Really quickly, an offer. One of the workers found something in the field, something he thinks is valuable. He'll sell it to you. Buy it for one gold, and we draw from the common item deck. Take it. It spawns a thug and ten corruption, or ignore it for no effect. She'll buy it. We have eleven gold. And it is a sacred wine. This wine has been blessed by the church and possesses amazing restorative power. Requires health not at maximum. Plus two health. One use remaining. Cool. Alright, so the cultist influence goes up. The plot. The enemy is on the move. You can feel it. When a cell with an X is filled, you draw a cult card. Cult cards are linked to the current enemy. Alright, so I'm going to save here, guys, and say thank you for joining me. 
do hope you enjoyed this first episode, and I hope you will tune in for more, because we're definitely going to be playing more. I'm going to try to get more episodes in. Finally getting to a game I've always wanted to. That's the thing with LTs, Let's Tries. I can get to a bunch of different games. We can play, you know, a handful or maybe even 50 episodes of it over time. Just kind of, you know, sampling more games that way. But thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate you all uh, very much. Our minus one actually does make a difference because they got a plus two. So actually... I don't know. Expected is two, but so maybe it's... I don't know. But um, yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate y'all. Much love, peace, and joy. Stay cool. Love you guys. Tune in next time, and I will see you guys then. Peace.